Hey all, welcome in. This is the continuation of A Slay the Princess. This time we need to get rid of the chat. There we go. Because this time we are on our own. It's only me and you, you two. And the princess, I guess. And the narrator, I guess. And all the other personalities we are going to find out about. Uh, so, technically, we're still a lot of people. That's fine, though. Uh, we're gonna continue... Uh, I'm assuming playing a new game. Because on our last playthrough, um, we went ahead and tried to, you know, be helpful to the princess and trying to save her and rescue her and whatever. Uh, if you want to see how this went, um, there's a playlist down below in the description. Uh, if not, that's fine too. This is going to be a completely new playthrough. And this time, we are going all Rambo on this lady. What I mean with going Rambo on this lady is we are going to stab her every chance we get. So let's go ahead and do that. Chapter 1, the hero and the princess. Okay, so the deal is... You're on a path in the woods. We heard most of those um, dialogues already. That means that we're gonna skip through everything we already heard. So this is not gonna be a first playthrough where we listen to all the dialogue we already heard about. We just want the new stuff. Again, if you want to be up to date on what we heard and what not, um, the playlist is down below with the Twitch VODs on my other channel over there. All the way over yonder. I'm talking about the end of every So Don't I'm gonna explore link all the dialogue. You're already on the while I appreciate Just in case that's a, you know you thing. Oh, if only that were the That opens up serious? new ways for us to get rid of her. Of course I haven't. So yes, you'll have to slay it's a secret. We know all about that. Which means... Okay, I'm sold. Let's go get over with this. Good. As long as you remain focused on your goal, it should all be smooth sailing. Let's see how smooth sailing it really will be. Because I feel like it won't be. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. She will lie. She will cheat and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not gonna go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. We're gonna slay her hard. Proceeding to the cabin. Let's see, I'm, I'm really curious to see where this leads because last the time, of the cabin is almost um, where we tried to, you, you know, the... not kill her, we had a whole thing going on, so... We're gonna continue down the stairs. You're still listening to reason. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. Uh, let me check the preferences real quick. Okay, it does not skin, uh, skip through unseen text. That's good. There we go. Uh, steal your nerves and step forward. You step forward, your grip on the blade tightening as you steal your resolve. Oh, no talking then. Fine. What even makes you think you can kill me? I'm probably chained up in this basement for a reason, right? And if that knife is the only weapon you have, you'll have to get close enough to use it. So, you should just drop it. Best not to risk finding out what I can do. It's she's gonna be arm. fine. If you hesitate now, it'll be too late. End this. She is not unarmed. You're lying to me, narrator. What if she you're kills us? Expecting to die, you're going to die. Hesitating? Why don't you drop the knife and the two of us can be civilized with each other? Slay the princess. 
You've charged the princess, blade trembling in your hand, but you've already lost the battle. No. She casually sidesteps your thrust before knocking you to the ground with a single blow from her elbow. We shouldn't have hesitated. But she doesn't stop there. She kicks you a few times for good measure, the pointed tip of her shoes feeling like a pickaxe against your fracturing bones, making sure you stay down. Ow! As you lie, crushed and broken on the basement floor, the princess kneels on your throat with the kind of weight you didn't think her slight frame could possibly possess. As you gasp for air, she eyes you with an intense curiosity. You shouldn't have let that fear creep into your heart. You had the upper hand, and now look at you. Well, I guess we're not exploring dialogue then. Is this really the best you could do? Look at you, completely broken. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't a little disappointed. I'm sorry, I have that effect on people. She applies more pressure slowly squeezing what's left of your life out of your lungs. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. Well, that was fast. Chapter 2 of the Tower. You're on a path. Um... A terrible sense of day. It hasn't. Okay, we had this dialogue already. Those are two very different questions, but fine, I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Of course we died. We couldn't land a single blow on her. And she broke every bone in our body before she decided to let us die. What were we supposed to do to stop her then? What are we supposed to do to stop her now? It's pointless. She's just a princess. Let's just talk about, about this it. princess. Like I said, if she killed... Mm, here we have our everything of that. Look. That's all. Proceed to the cabin. A warning. Before you proceed into the cabin. I guess I don't have a say here. Nope, you don't. Take the blade. You take the blade from the altar. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement. Okay, so I'm guessing they don't want us to explore shit now. Fine. The door to the basement creaks open. Continue down the stairs. Making your way down the spiral staircase is a time-consuming and exhausting effort, every step requiring you to clamber over one edge before dropping to the next. But soon the end comes into view, and you tumble to the bottom, entering the vast, temple-like room beyond. The princess towers over you, oh, almost my God. glowing in the weak starlight, her figure framed by a stained glass window. Her long hair billows around her, and a chain binds her wrist to the far wall. So last time we were here, we kinda got, um, you know, we did what all people on the internet uh, probably have done. So this time this is gonna be diff different. We're gonna tighten our grip and try to resist her. As if on command, the blade slips from your grasp. It clatters uselessly to the floor. Wait, did I misclick? But we didn't drop it. Oh no. We decided to grip it tighter, remember? Are you really just gonna let that happen to us? No. I have a duty to report facts as facts, and the fact is that you dropped the blade. Of course we dropped it. She's so much more than us. You wouldn't understand what it feels like to be in her presence. Oh, I understand what's going on, and you'd better snap yourself out of it. Neil. No. Oh, are you still trying to defy me? I said Neil. Your legs buckle, and your knees hit the floor. Damn. That's my good little bird. No. Why don't we talk? Bird. The last time we met, you couldn't even scratch me. And yet here you are again, trying to succeed where you've already catastrophically failed. I am a very stubborn person. What draws you back here beyond the empty halls of death? 
Speak. The last time we met? I suppose that lends credence to our conversation in the woods. Still, whatever you do, don't tell her why you're here. It's best not to give her any ideas. Mm. No. Perhaps you need another lesson in submitting to your betters. Pick up that needle. Do it. It's what she wants. No objections here. I don't know what she's planning, and I don't like that we don't know what she's planning, but we might as well pick up the blade. No. As your eye falls on the blade, oh, you never feel a weight. <laughs> Some divine hand that sits unperceived by your senses, but then manages to push you towards its desires like an unseen puppeteer. Oh, we don't even have the option. Interesting. Pick up the blade. You reach forward and grasp the blade. Stand. No. This one's easy. See? This isn't so bad. Stop being so submissive. Okay, yeah. We can do that. We were probably gonna stand anyway. I wish I could use those options. I wonder if there's like a dialogue option that brings me here that I can actually use it. You can feel a creaking tension between body and will as you slowly rise to your feet, like two foes forced into an unhappy truce. I mean, there probably is. The princess eyes you with soft contemplation. The moment seems to last a lifetime, the silent anticipation of what's to come dragging out the long, painful seconds. But all silences are broken eventually. To defy me is to claim we stand on level ground. We do not. You are quiet, Shadow, while I and brilliant radiance. Eh. Take that knife in your hand and slit your throat. What? You don't have to listen to her. You're armed. Just steal your nerves, step forward, and end this. <laughs> I mean, slitting the throat is a kind of ending, I guess. <laughs> oh, we'll end this all right. Your hand lifts the yeah, blade and brings I it figured. towards your throat. Okay, I apologize for the unclear language. End her. <laughs> Slay the princess. Your body is sluggish and unresponsive, actively fighting against you, but you do your best to stagger forward. One step at a time, you move towards the princess. Slitting your throat would have been a mercy, but it seems you're in need of a harsher lesson. Yes. Plunge that knife into your lungs. No. I'm sorry. Don't. No. As you take another step forward, the blade digs into your ribs, slicing through flesh with ease. It's Why would you do that? Like an entirely natural thing to do, while the simple act of walking has become an arduous impossibility. I just noticed. I, I didn't notice it the last time. But as soon as blood is on the knife... The mouse corso also has blood on it. I did not notice that last time. That's a really cool detail. Then it slides back out, the wound burning as a small hiss of air escapes through the fresh orifice. Blood fills your lungs. Now, do it again. Keep doing it until I give you permission to stop. That's just rude. Those are just words. You don't have to listen to her. It's what she wants. You, heroic one, what are you doing? Don't just let this happen. Stop him from killing you. I'm on it. Your other hand locks around your wrist, struggling to keep it from perforating vital organs. But the blade still flails towards mm. you, managing to slice bits of skin that plop to the floor to join the growing pile of blood and gore beneath you. Despite the pain, you manage to keep yourself in one piece. At least for now. Eh, we, we, we're done. We're done for. What a pitiful display. A wounded little bird thinking it can defy a god. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to hurt so much. 
You can choose a gentle end. You can choose to leave that punctured vessel for the next. Slay the princess. Or you can pathetically struggle against yourself until the floor of this temple is painted with the bloody impressions of your futility. You know, I kind of want to go in here all rumbo and just, you know, keep killing, keep killing, keep killing. But this is literally the opposite of what I was thinking was going to happen in the first chapter-ish. Like, it's a, I know it's a second chapter, uh, whatever. But you, you know what I mean. You continue to approach the princess, even as the repeated gouges of your blade expose bone and muscle to the open air of the basement. You know, this would be a lot easier if you gave us a hand. My influence only goes so far, and I can only juggle so many things at once. The best I can do right now is to continue to drive you forward. Believe me, this whole ordeal would be so much easier if I didn't have to contend with free will. Yeah, what a shame. You're the one making things difficult. You're the one making us hurt. She doesn't want to hurt us. She's just doing what she has to. Stop. But... As you finish crossing the room, you fall to your knees at the princess's feet, your chest heaving as your blood pools in the crevices of the stone floor, the coppery taste coating your throat. The princess kneels down, lifting your chin with her finger as her face lowers to yours. Your devotion is misplaced. You've surrendered to delusion. But something about your defiant spirit speaks to me. You are different than you were before. Am I? Perhaps, if you've learned your lesson, I can spare you from the release of death. There is a place at my side for you, if you'll have it. Not as an equal, but as something worthy to be kept. A priest, perhaps. Or a pet. Last time we did that, I think. Well, that's the meaning, isn't it? Yes, how thoughtful of her. It's a mercy. Take it. No. I think he's given up whatever say he had at the start of all this. At least one of you is sane. She's within striking distance, and she's only negotiating now because she knows you have what it takes to put an end to her. Seize the moment before it's too late. Slay the princess. No. Yes. Though your body trembles, struggling to defend itself in the face of the princess's overwhelming will, you finally manage to break through, darting to her side before she can react. The wind of your freedom rushes through you, Not and you the feet. It into a decisive blow, stabbing into the soft flesh of her ankle and severing the tendons in an act of unyielding defiance. She falls to the floor, crashing unceremoniously to her knees. But you don't give her any time to recover. Your heart pounding with determination, you plunge your blade into her chest. As you find your target again and again, she laughs, crude emotion breaking through her once stony composure as your blade cuts her flesh. We can do this, can't we? You always could. The decision to give you this task was not made lightly. You're here for a reason. I mean, at least she's enjoying it, I guess. It's not too late to pick up the pieces. It's not too late to toss that blade aside and beg for forgiveness. Shut up. I can't believe you would actually strike me. You. You hit Before you can I skipped it. Oh, God, I'm sorry. The princess lashes out, knocking you off your feet. I, I, I skipped whatever she had to say. Sh uh... <laughs> I'm sorry. I apologize. A settling wet pop as your spine breaks, numbness and pain spreading through your body. As you rebound towards the ceiling in a moment of disorientated lightness, she drives her fist into your chest. Your body is crushed as she pulverizes you into the floor, the ground itself breaking from the impact. You lie there, broken, beyond pain, unable to even see what she's done to you. But the princess is succumbing to her own wounds as well. She looks down upon her body in abject horror and disgust. You made me use my hands. I... I can feel myself twisting into something new. Oh. Something dull, something defiled. What have you done to me? 
Something dull and defiant. Monsters and conspirators. I can't bear to watch them. <laughs> Shut up. The princess has been nothing but cruel to you. You should feel liberated by her fall. But I don't feel liberated. I feel empty. Aside from the pain, I feel fine. She collapses to the floor. Her glassy eyes watch, unblinking, yet somehow still full of anguish and fear as the two of you perish together. I just got an achievement, uh, God Killer. Slay or better or something, it said. I suppose we were never gonna get a happy ending here, were we? Don't let those be your final thoughts. You saved the world. That's worth something. I guess. Oh. Regardless of how you feel about it, it's finally over. Thank you. Everything goes dark, and you die. You're welcome. Chapter 3, The Fury. Not the fairy, the fury. Oh boy. On a path in the woods. And at the end of the path... Okay, what the hell is that? <laughs> oh no. I think he's upset. And what's he got to be upset about? We just killed a god. Exactly. You heathens destroyed the most beautiful thing that ever was. And ever oh my god. It's such a fanboy. <laughs> I love it. You're damn right we did. You'll get over it. Damn right. I can't say I have much sympathy for you. She was bad for us, and you almost got us killed. You're being too generous. He did get us killed. All right, enough chatter. I've got a thing I'm supposed to do, and if you don't mind, I'd like to do it without any more interruptions. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, great, you're listening. <clears throat> you're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a... If your thing is telling us about the princess, don't waste your breath. We know all about her, and it's hardly a path in the woods at this point, is it? Well, this is just great. <sighs> Let me cut to the chase. Clearly, you've already been here. I don't know why, but this gives me Binding of Isaac vibes. Yeah, you think? I actually, I don't think we have been here. This is all different, isn't it? Yes, precisely. And if you'd given me two seconds to finish my thought, I would have said that. I don't think so. Oh, you're actually letting me talk now. Great. Mm -hmm. If you've already been here, it means you've seen things you aren't supposed to have seen, and you know things that you aren't supposed to know. This doesn't look like a path in the woods, if reality seems distorted. It's because reality is distorted. Oh, what a shame. So you knew this could happen. You knew we'd be able to restart like this. I know all sorts of things, which is why you should listen to me. You're talking bullshit, sir. That's not really an answer. Look, if the world around you is changing, especially all the way out here, then that means you're nearing the point of no return. Whatever happens next, that's it. There won't be any more do-overs. So you'd better take things seriously. <laughs> you said yourself that you know more than you're letting on. If you want me to go to the cabin, then you'd better tell us everything. I can't. Anything I say at this point is far more likely to accelerate the unraveling of this place than it is to actually help you do your job. In fact, I probably shouldn't have even said that. I trust that if you've been here before, it means you know how dangerous she is. And that you know I'm not lying to you about her. Really? That's it. That's all we're getting out of you. He just wants to keep things going the way they are. But we've been given a second chance to do right by her. She can build something better than this. She can build something better than us. We just have to let her do it. No. I get it. We are going You're rumble. Conflicted. We've been through a lot, but I really have to be firm here. I will tell you one thing, which is that even now, you are capable of stopping her and saving the world from ruin. You always have been. You always will be. Do with that what you will. It feels like I'm being pulled in a hundred different directions. You'd better all listen to me when the time comes to make a choice. So what if I'm speaking my mind? It's not like I've ever really gotten a say in things. 
What a crock of shit. <laughs> yeah, you stabbed us last time. Repeatedly. It didn't even work. It doesn't count. Oh, okay, okay. We died. If you didn't submit to her, for all we know, that wouldn't have happened. It's the punishment you all deserved for not listening to me. To her. Aside from our sulking friend, I don't think you have much to worry about. You're still the one in charge here, and I don't think that's ever gonna change. The second he tries something, I'll put a stop to it. If I don't slay her, if I just stay here or do anything else and we hit this point of no return, then what happens? Then what happens? Have you even been listening? It's the end is what happens. I mean, this pretty much looks like the, the end to me already, so... Yeah, but is there something after the end? How am I supposed to know? The end means finality. It's not like I can just peek on over to the other side and tell you what it's like there. If there even is a there, it doesn't matter because we're going to win. Uh huh. Now that's exactly the sort of mindset I like to see. Don't let yourself be consumed with self-doubt. Don't flirt with oblivion. Just focus on the present and everything will be absolutely fine. Okay. Let's go. Good. We're all on the same page. It isn't long before you find yourself at the end of the path, staring up at the cabin on the hill. You'll find the princess within. As I'm sure you already know. End her. That's it? No final words of advice? I'd rather not waste any more time. I'm sure that any advice I'd give at this point is something you've already heard. If there's still a princess at the cabin, maybe we can salvage things. Maybe if we just grovel and apologize, things can go back to how they were before. Oh, cut it out, will you? We need to be tough right now. You're making it so much harder than it has to be, so stop whining. Yeah, damn right. Stop whining, little boy. The interior of the cabin is a place that feels long forgotten. There was once an elegance to its construction. Carved marble columns holding a high arched roof. Vaulted windows letting in the weak starlight. But that is how it was. Now there is a growth that has overtaken it. A viscous fluid seeps from cracks in the stone walls, and it congeals into chaotic streaks of writhing nerves and wet clumps of living meat. Mmm, yummy. That's horrible. You did this. The only furniture of note is a pulsating pedestal, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. I'm gonna ignore the mirror. Uh, take the blade. You take the blade from the pedestal. It would be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good. Nothing feels better than gripping cold steel. That damn right. Approach the mirror. You step forward and approach the door to the basement, hesitating before you open it. Almost as if you don't see it. But you must, because it's right there in front of you. All we see is a damn mirror. It's a bit grimy. Why don't we wipe it clean? Wipe what clean? The door? The mirror. What are you talking about? You're standing in front of a door. Whatever non-door thing you think you're looking at, it isn't real, because if it were real, I'd know about it. Yeah, the non-door thing, you know? The thing that's grimy and stuff. But it has to be real. It's right <laughs> there. Smash it. Smash it to pieces. It's the only thing keeping us from her. Don't you want to know what we'll see in there? We won't be able to see anything if we smash it. Nah, I'm with him on this one. Smash it. Let's get violent already. Damn Do right. Do you want with it. The mirror isn't real, so how you handle it doesn't matter, aside from wasting dangerous amounts of time. Smash it. Bring your fist crashing down against the door leading to the basement. As if on command, it slowly slides open, scraping against the stone floor, its ancient hinges moaning as it reveals the dim path ahead. Why am I not surprised? You yeah, we had the mirror the a few darkness. times already. So, eh. The stairs leading down to the basement are at once both narrow and grandiose. A high vaulted ceiling stretches up into a gloom beyond your sight, 
while walls wet with tumorous growths press in uncomfortably at your sides. You feel both unprotected and trapped, at once exposed and claustrophobic. The air is thick, its odor an oppressive violence, the metallic scent of fresh blood twisting with the nauseating embers of charred remains. If the princess lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice, a bellowing rage, roars up the stairs. Was severing the tendons of my ascension not enough for you? Was it not enough to rend my divine heart? Ooh. Come, see the horrors you wrought upon my flesh, and feel my hands set upon your throat. Oh, yes, please. She's so angry with us. Why? Why did you desecrate her? Why couldn't I stop you? You've got to stop thinking about her like that. It isn't doing anyone any good. I cannot wait to see where this goes. <laughs> She's not some untouchable god. She's an abomination. And we're going to put an end to her once and for all. Whatever she is now is our fault. If she's an abomination, then what does that make us? Oh. Stop fangirling. It doesn't matter what we are. She needs slaying. And we've got the means to do it. So let's get a move on. Damn right, boy. If I might interject... You didn't make her into an abomination. She's always been what she is. It's why you're here. And it's why your task is so important. Continue down the stairs. You make your way to the bottom of the stairs. The chamber's walls are painted in blood. A deep, sickening red that drips down in clotted streams onto the charred corpses that make up its floor. This place reeks of torment, of ripped skin and burning bones. Honestly, I thought it was worse. The princess stands in its center, muscles flayed and bare and weeping, draped in a tattered dress of her own skin. Her heart beats from its place in her open chest. Do you know what I'm going to do to you? There's not so much a moment of hesitation before she steps forward. Her chains pull taut, holding fast as she strains against them. The cuff around her wrist digs deeper into her skin. Blood drips from the place where metal meets flesh. Oh. And then, with a nauseating sound, the skin tears. Uh. It plops to the ground, and she pulls her red, glistening arm free from her bindings. Oh no. She is loose, and she is coming for you. Let her end it. It's the punishment you all deserve for what you did to her. It's the punishment I deserve for letting it happen. Screw that. We can win. We've done it before and we'll do it again, only this time we'll make it out the other side. Hell, she's practically done most of the work for us. I don't think this is how this works, Mr. Stubborn Man, sir. Voice in my head. I'm going to end you. You'll try. And that's what I've been so excited for. Let's hurt each other. I can hurt people. Your heart free of fear. You charge towards the princess. Your eyes locked on each other. Both of you prepared to lay down your very essence in one blow. It's now or never. Let's make it a beautiful blaze of glory. With a horrifying squelch. You are unwound. Well, yeah, I figured that's how this was gonna end. I hope you weren't planning on dying. We're going to make this last forever. Oh? Huh. I feel cold. I've never felt cold before. Interesting. Well, couldn't that have happened like five seconds ago, please? True to her word, you do not die by her hand. Something has taken her away, and it's left something else in her place. She's gone? Where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? The narrator is gone. 
Does that mean the world ended? The world didn't end. We are still here. Come on. We just need to keep going. Figures the world would end and leave us with all this nothing. I don't know where she went, and I don't know how we'd even go about looking for her. You're right. She's gone. It's just us and that awful thing. It's like it's mocking us. I feel anxious. Does anyone else feel anxious? I think I'm supposed to look at the mirror. There's something dreadful about it. I, I don't think you should. Screw the mirror. We just need to fight the princess. I don't want to look at us. Approach the mirror. I'm begging you, don't do this. I don't have another option. Sorry, mate. The mirror never scared you before. It's different now. It feels... I don't know. Final. You approach the mirror. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They are gone. But the mirror remains. It's time for you to see what is in it. It is you. Okay, interesting. We proceed to the cabin. So we already had this. We gotta approach her. Something finds me in the long quiet. And yeah, we already had that. I am so interesting. Thoughts without. What do you think I am? I think that you are like me. We are oceans, reduced to shallow creeks. Mm -hmm. Are you what sent me to slay the princess? I have only just now stirred to consciousness. So this is basically the same thing. Okay, um, let's go attack the entity. We are going all Rambo on this. I said so. Your will cuts across the entity in front of you, but nothing happens. My roots burrow in an ocean beyond your sight. We cannot harm each other as we are now. Okay, I'm gonna yes, skip through all the all, all, all of the stuff. Then. And fibers to feel the worlds beyond. Perspectives to make my own. This one is desecration. She placed the weight of her agony on you, yet it is she who unwound herself. But there is passion and empathy in her misery. She will make for a burning heart. Do not mourn her. She has finally found peace. Is this the end of the world? How can the world... Yeah. I'm sorry. But were you always the princess, or are you just making her a part of yourself? You speak in circles. Okay, we, we already had that. Do we know each other? You are familiar. So we never destroyed our body, so I'm gonna do that. You raise your will to end your life, but as it buries into the space your body should be, you feel nothing at all. One of the many hands in front of you reaches forward and gently touches the side of your face. There's nowhere for you to be but here. What happens now? Nothing, as we are. But I know that the. Aren't you scared that I'll find a way to kill you? I have not lived. I am not afraid to die. Yeah. Everything. More than you have found. Then we will. You ask of things that. You are being semantic. What are you going to do if I help you? How can I know? Okay, okay we're not gonna wait since that uh, ends up being in the endless loop. She asks that I tell you to remember her. You won't. 
everything goes dark and you die. Achievement unlock, bring the fury to her. Okay, we're back to chapter one. You're on a path. Uh, we're going to skip through and keep going for a um, second, but I just need uh, two minutes. All right, we're back in action. Um, let me see. All right, off we spirit. go. Off we go. Proceed to the cabin. And see which princess we will get now. The interior of the cabin is almost... Take the blade. You take the blade from... Enter the basement. The door to the... Continue down the stairs. You're still listening to reason. Steal your nerves and step forward. Step forward. Slay the princess. You lunge forward without a moment's hesitation. You feel flesh easily give way and look down to see your blade already sinking deep into her heart. Damn right. Oh. This is it, isn't it? Yep. I'm almost embarrassed. I should have seen that coming. But I have to wonder. Do you actually believe this was enough to kill me? No. It's like she's convinced she can't die. Yes. Even as she lays there dying, she entirely believes herself to be alive and... But it's over, isn't it? She stopped breathing moments ago, that arrogant look still plastered on her face. But is it over? Really over? Of course not. That was way too easy. It's over. Don't get all worked up. We should make sure. What's the harm in checking for a pulse? I really don't think you should do that. And why shouldn't we? Is there something you're not telling us? I've told you everything that's happened with complete accuracy. The princess is dead. Your blade pierced her heart. There's no coming back from that. You're right. She's dead. Let's just get out of here. Yes, exactly. It's over. With your work done, you make your way back up the stairs, closing the door to the basement behind you. Why do I feel like we've done something terrible? You did kill someone. Greater good or not, something would be very wrong with you if you didn't feel at least a little bad. I'm good. But it was for the greater good. One of these days that will sink in and help ease your guilty conscience. I'm not sure, but okay. But that day isn't today. Let's just get out of here. Leave. You open the cabin door, ready to return to a world saved from certain doom. Yay, we won. Only, a world saved from certain doom isn't what you find. Instead, what you find is nothing at all. Where a lush forest stood mere minutes ago, the only thing in front of you now is the vast emptiness of some place far away. What happened? Everyone is fine. It's just that... You and the cabin are now far away from them. Don't worry. You'll be safe here. This is good. Everyone is happy. You'll be happy. Okay, now I'm confused. That's bullshit. What's done is done. And there's no going back now. This is what's best for everyone. Trust me. And trust me, brother. Time passes. You can't be sure if it's days, or months, or years, or even decades. It's all a wonderful, boring blur. You've never been happier. Psst. Hey. We're not just gonna stay here forever, right? Didn't you hear the narrator? I'm happy. We are happy. Are we really happy? Or is he just telling us that we are? No, we're happy, I'm sure of it. Really? Well, if you ever change your mind, just let me know, I guess. More happy time passes, though the word begins to lose its meaning. Time, that is. Not happy. Happy still has plenty of meaning. Please, shake yourself out of it. We have to get out of here. 
the little voices please fall on deaf ears. Eventually you pass into a blissful state of pure existence. Though words like eventually and pass ceased to have any meaning to you long before that shift, you simply exist. Happy. Forever. That's lovely. Hey, good ending. You did it. You we saved everyone. Oh. To my completion. You cannot go further astray. Oh, okay. Uh, past the uh, past the point of no return, there's no going back now. Was uh, the achievement we got? So, uh, okay, maybe I'm not happy, and I'm not just saying that because you're the last person I talked to. Good, because I have an idea to get us out of here, though you're probably not going to like it. Is that it? The blade. We can use the blade to get out of this. I can hear everything you say, little voice. There's only one thing it would want you to use that blade on. And I'm afraid that thing is you, dear hero. He's right. It's the only way out. Do you hear that? It wants to take this happiness away from you. It wants this wonderful place to end. Do you not? There's more for us to do. And the only way for us to do it is to take that blade and use it. Mm. Don't you dare. Wouldn't using the blade, you know, kill us? Wouldn't we be dead? How astute. You are absolutely correct. Using the blade to kill yourself would kill you, and you shouldn't do it. In a sense, we'd die, but looking at things from another angle, are we even really alive anymore? This place, it's nothing. It's absolutely nothing. It's just the same thing, constantly, forever. I'm living like this for like 15 years now, so... I know this is out there, but <laughs> trust me, I know using the blade will work. That little voice didn't want you to slay the princess. It didn't want you to be happy. Hmm. You'd better be upright about this. I'd be pretty upset if we die, die. If we die, die, you can yell at me all you want. I made this happy little place for you. Is this not a good enough reward for saving the world? An eternity of bliss? You... you... ingrate? Yeah. Fine. Whatever. For the first time since time stopped meaning anything, you throw open the door to the basement and walk down the stairs. The princess's body is dust and bones, though the blade you used to slay her is still as pristine as the day you first held it. You pick up the blade, you stab yourself, and you die. He's so done. <laughs> The no. end. Nice knowing you. Chapter 3. The Spectre. You're on a path in the woods. And at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Oh, you bastard. You're in for it now. I'm wise to your tricks. My tricks? What on earth are you talking about? We've just met for the first time. If he doesn't remember what happened, then maybe it's best to keep it that way. That's fine. It wasn't very hard to kill her last time. We'll just do it again. Well, if for whatever reason you're going to insist that this has happened before, at least your heart's in the right place. Yeah, let's assume I'm telling the truth. Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is. If you're back here, mm. I'm... Oh, we listened to you plenty. We slew the princess just like you asked us to, and then you locked us away in an empty void for eternity. So we slew ourselves, too. Well, if you killed yourself, then you weren't listening to me, because I would never want you to do that. Believe it or not, I care about you. Mm -hmm. And I believe your other question was something along the lines of, oh, what's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. We slew the princess, the world outside the ca- Yes, but in this- Had you failed to slay the prin- It doesn't matter, because we didn't fail to slay her. And if she's really back, which I doubt, It'll be just as easy to do it again. 
But after that nasty trick you pulled on us, maybe she's not the only one around here in need of slaying. Oh, damn. Just stay focused, will you? Let's talk about this princess. About That's a good point. How do we know we didn't have things backwards? Yes. Maybe this whole thing was a trick to get us to end the world. And now we get to go through the whole charade again, wholly aware of what's waiting for us at the end. But that's assuming she's alive in that cabin. We did kill her, after all. You're going to find her in the cabin. If the princess had actually been slain, you wouldn't be here. And let me assure you, killing her will not end the world. I don't know what you think happened to you last time. Mm. It's a load of nonsense. You'll get your happy ending. I promise. I don't like the narrator's way of happy. Well, that's exactly what we're afraid of. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really? Living happily ever after sounds that bad to you? Oh, well. There's no use arguing over your masochism. The cabin awaits. Oh, my God. <clears throat> Last time around, I stabbed her in the heart and she died. How can someone like that end the world? She just can. You'll have to trust that what I'm saying is true. Who locked her in the basement? People locked her in that basement, and I told you what this place is. Okay. Look, I'm not supposed to say this. Oh, I didn't know we were special. Of course we're special. Of course, we're special. I've told you everything you need to know. This is boring. He's clearly not interested in talking. So let's just do as he says. And maybe he'll stop bothering us. Sounds good. Great. Now, if you don't mind, the whole world is waiting with bated breath for you to save it from ruin. Proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie. She won't be a problem. Okay, let's proceed. So I'm skipping through the narrator since we heard all of this. Um, I'm just listening to the what the cold the voice has to say. Cold. A soft odor. The blade is your implement. It feels like no one's been here for a long, long time. I'm not sure. Is this the first? With the tapestry and stuff? I'm not sure if we've been here before. Like I've been saying, she's dead. We killed her already. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Enter the basement. Now I'm curious to see what happens. The door to the basement groans open, revealing an old banister and a creaky wooden stairwell. Everything is coated in a thick layer of dust. And you can feel it settle into your lungs as you breathe in the stale air. The very building itself feels dead. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. The room below is silent. Ooh, that's a first. Nobody's here, naturally. As much as I appreciate the optimism, you shouldn't be so sure. I guess we'll just have to go down and see. As you descend the final step, Damn. the form of the princess comes into view. A skeletal body lying in a heap on the floor, its wrist still bound to the wall by a thick chain. Interesting. Okay. She's definitely dead. It's just like I told you. Before you have a chance to finish your thought, the top of a head appears from oh, underneath no. the Oh no. Two deep-set eyes stare up at you, oh, no. followed by a mischievous, skeletal grin. And finally, the rest of the body floats up to join the head. Wait, this isn't right. What's going on here? <laughs> the happy little wave. Really cool. A g -g -g ghost Oh. Wow. How absolutely terrifying. What's a ghost supposed to do to us? Oh, it's you. Hiya, Keller. Hiya, Keller. I was hoping to see you again. <laughs> I had some issues with how our last meeting went. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm so sorry about that. The princess drifts across the room into your orbit, gently running her fingers across your shoulders and down your neck as she circles you. 
Her touch is cold and ethereal, formless yet real enough that her icy fingertips send shivers dancing across your skin. So she has a body, and she's right there. That means we could kill her again, if we wanted to. Slay the princess! Without a moment's hesitation, you lash out with your blade. It's like you're slashing at air. No matter how many times you stab at her, no matter how many angles you strike from, all you manage to do is interrupt her form, the skin of your hand prickling with cold as it passes through, unable to find anything solid. Shocker. Hmm. You're adorable when you're confused. But I didn't say you could touch me. I'm sorry. Why are you even here? Just making sure you finish the job? Or what? Hmm. If I knew I'd have to talk to you again, I wouldn't have slain you. Hmm. Of course I attacked you. You're supposed to end the world. That's why I killed you last time, too. So, that's where the hostility comes from. I don't know where you got that idea. It's a yes or no question. Do you want to end the world? I already gave you my answer. All I want to do is leave. All I want to do is stop feeling trapped. I couldn't give a damn about the world. I can't even remember what it's like. I think that's all the answer we're going to get out of her. Well, were you going to end the world? Would you end it if you could? Well, killer, what does it mean for something to end anyway? You ended me, but I'm still right here in front of you, aren't I? After seeing what you've seen, how can you be sure anything ends? I see her point. Everything here is so impermanent, always shifting. The end of one thing just leads to the start of another. Things end. Things have to end. This sentence just ended. Oh, come on. I'm floating right in front of you. Still here despite your best efforts. You can't pretend that it doesn't mess with the whole concept of... Ending. Leave it at that. Okay. What do we have here? Mm. <laughs> Slay the princess harder. <laughs> we'll do that in a second. If I knew I had to, I'd have to talk to you again, I wouldn't have slain you. And if I knew you were going to murder me without even knowing who I was, I wouldn't have given you the chance. We all make mistakes. This is not creepy at all. Had I too, and I'm not floating around like you are. What happened? Why am I different? Why are you different? You don't look dead, killer. The princess grabs your wrist, a sudden shock of cold flowing all the way up your arm, her eyes still fixed on yours as you try to squirm out of her grip. And you don't feel dead either. She lets go and pulls away. Your fingertips tingle painfully as the chill subsides. Okay, so she doesn't know. Yeah. I'm less interested in why you are, or how you are, and a lot more interested in what you are. I've tried to leave on my own. Before you came back to me, I explored every inch of this place, even the spaces between the walls. But I never found a way out. I always wound up right back here. I just want to go home. I'm so cold and alone here. But you can come and go as you please, can't you? So, let me hitch a ride. After all, you owe me. Absolutely not. Is she asking if she can possess us? It would be cool, though. She is. And I hope I don't need to explain why you can't let that happen. It would be catastrophic mm. if she managed to escape this place. And if you let her in, there is very little anyone could do to stop her. Would she be able to see us if we went along with it? 
Now isn't that an interesting thought? Hmm. We could finally bring her face to face oh, with him. Oh, interesting. I wonder what she would have to say to the one who wants her dead so, so badly. <sighs> you won't like how things play out if you go down this path. I kind of want to know. Okay, hold on. I'm going to save here. Okay. Uh, we're going to explore the things first. Uh, what if I say no? Then I won't hit your rod. That's it? Okay. You won't hit your ride if I say no. Or you can't hit your ride. I'm sure you'd like to know. It's a shame I won't tell you. But... It'll be easier for both of us if you just let me in. And doesn't it sound nice? Oh man. It sounds really, really tempting. Maybe for her, but... It's crowded enough in here as is. You won't have to feel guilty anymore. If you even do... I, I, I don't care about that. It could be the best way to trap her for good. Doesn't seem like it would be very easy to end the world from inside someone else's body. That is a very dangerous train of thought. Mm. This would be just temporary, right? You'll leave once we're out of the cabin. If I'm able to. But for all we know, that's not how it works. Maybe I'll wind up stuck with you for a long, 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 long time. Oh man, I kind of want to do it. Do you hear the way she said that? She knows more than she's letting on. Don't let her fool you into doing something you'll regret. If I let you in, do I still get to be in control? Sure. Why not? That doesn't sound very reassuring. I can't believe you're even entertaining her right now. I mean, just look at her. Do you think she has good intentions for her murderer's body? Of course she doesn't. Uh, I'm gonna resave here, yes. Okay. Okay. Hold on, so if we go to return, I need to think on this. Probably she's like, um, forcing herself in or something. So let's try this first and then we're gonna let her in, I think. Take your time. I know it's a lot to think about, but I'm very good at waiting. Okay. Oh, okay, we can explore the other things first. Nice. Hmm. I killed you. What are you doing not being dead? I don't feel very bad, but I guess I'm not, not dead, so you must have only mostly killed me. Or maybe death is only mostly real, but it's also mostly not real. I'm not sure. I'm just the one these things have happened to, not the one with all the answers, or any of the answers. But we're not a ghost. Unless we are? Death? at least as a form of permanence, mm. is just a concept. And clearly it's not a very useful one anymore. Maybe we should throw it out entirely. See, this is why I didn't want you to talk to her. <laughs> Death is not just a concept, it is an extremely real phenomenon. Don't let her distort your reality. Cold hard facts exist. The truth exists. It has to. Well then explain it, dude. <laughs> Hmm. Man, there's so much stuff to explore. Let's go. Okay. Okay, team. I'm th out of ideas. Thoughts? You could always try violence. It's worked for us so far. We tried to cut off her head earlier, so it's not gonna happen. She's a ghost. Yeah. Who says ghosts are immune to violence? We tried it like five seconds ago, dude. Common sense? There's nothing common or sensible about common sense. Action and observation are the only things that matter. Fine, then let me observe that the acts of killing her and killing ourselves haven't got us much of anywhere. We're still back in this cabin, we're still dealing with her, only now she has a good reason to hate us. I suppose you have a point. Do you have any ideas then? I don't know. Maybe we do what she wants. Maybe we let her possess us and walk out of here. We could. It would be something different. 
I like. Like, I'm already, I'm already sold here, so... Absolutely not. If you walk her out of here, she's going to end the world. And is that really so bad? Yes. It is, by its very definition, bad. But those are the only options, aren't they? Violence, or doing what she wants. Or just leaving her down here. Though ignoring a problem is rarely a solution, is it? True that. See, this is exactly what I was trying to tell you about in the woods. This already happened. We killed her. Yes, obviously things are strange right now. I think it's safe to say that you've seen something, something you shouldn't have seen. Whatever worlds you've hopped between, whatever versions of me you've met, none of that matters now. There's no changing what's already happened. But you have a job to finish. Finish how? We already did what you told us. And now she's a ghost. You haven't tried slaying her yet this time, though, have you? We did. And then what? Didn't we? And then you'll have saved the world. I think he's asking about what happens after we save the world. If that's even still an option. What do you mean, after? You already know what we mean, don't you? So why don't you go ahead and tell us? Are you going to try and lock us away in the timeless void again? Because I didn't much care for that. I'm not going to lock you anywhere. Nice. What an interesting choice of emphasis. Your body is right there, though. Your dead body. The princess glances back at the bones lying on the floor. It's just a body. Do you believe these bones? Or do you believe me? Because those bones aren't talking to you. She's seeing things pragmatically. We should do the same. Reality is what's in front of us, not our mm. preconceptions of what it should be. There doesn't need to be a static truth. There doesn't need to be objectivity. We know why you came back. How should I know? Why does anyone come back? Maybe I have unfinished business with you. Or maybe you have unfinished business with me. All I know is there's a hole in my chest. Not the big obvious one that you put there. There's something older and deeper. Yeah. A nagging reminder that I'm not where I'm supposed to be. Interesting. Stop playing the victim. You threatened me last time. Well, yeah. You were brought a knife with you. Was I supposed to just welcome you with open arms when you obviously had stabbing on the mind? Yes. That knife could have been for anything. It could have, but it wasn't. You can't blame me for threatening a would-be knife-wielding murderer. Especially when that would-be knife-wielding murderer became an actual knife-wielding murderer. <laughs> uh. You are dead, or at least mostly dead. What can you even do to hurt me? A boring question with an easy answer. Nothing. She's a ghost. Ghosts can't hurt us. That's for me to know, and for you to wonder about. Maybe I can't do anything to you. See? Or maybe, maybe I can, can rip your heart out. out. Who's to say, really? I don't like the uncertainty here. I don't know what to do, or who to trust. Okay, I'm gonna save here again since we exhausted all the options. And then... We are going... To... Man, I want to process her, want to get possessed, but... We said we are going all rumble on her, so slay the princess harder. You swing at the princess once more, and once more, your blade cuts through nothing as she disappears. Really? Yes. Her voice chides from elsewhere in the room. You whirl around, finding her hovering between you and the basement stairs, looking you over with grim disappointment. I'm sorry. She draws in close. I'm really sorry. I was willing to let bygones be bygones, killer. I was willing to ignore everything you did to me so we could get out of here, together. I'm really sorry. All I ever wanted was to leave this place. All I ever wanted was to find a way back home. Wherever home is. Aww. 
Her eyes turn from wells of sorrow to pits of wrath as she stares into you. Codex of Violence is the only language you speak. She forces her hand into your chest, and then... Yes? Nothing happens. Are you sure about that? So something should have happened. And yet it didn't. We're fine. Hmm. I'm not afraid of you. Not yet, but let's see if you stay that way. You can't be sure if you first hear or feel what happens next, but it is over before you can fully conceptualize what it is. A horrific splintering, the squelching of organs, the rending of tissue, an icy, numbing pain. Well, that sucks. I'm done asking. The next time I see you, I'm taking everything I owed. Starting with your body. If you won't choose to give me my freedom, I'll just have to make you give it to me. She's real now. If she's making us dead, we should return the favor. We tried to slay the princess twice already. You swing your blade towards her briefly corporeal throat. It connects. A gash widens across her neck, glowing ectoplasm leaking from the wound. Ugh. But it's too little, too late. In her hand, you realize she clutches your still beating heart. It thumps unsettlingly. I got an achievement for that. I didn't catch what it read, sorry. Did we get her? Even if we didn't, we've given her something to remember. See you soon, killer. I'm afraid you'll never know. As she crushes your precious organ in her hand, everything goes dark, and you die. Chapter 3, The Wraith You're on a path in the woods, and here we go again. Off to slay her again. The deck's stacked, isn't it? We kill her, we start again. She kills us as a goddamn ghost, we start again. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to think we're being run in circles just for the sake of it. Come on, let's not give in to all that misery just yet. There's got to be a way out of this. Yeah. And what if there isn't? Aren't you listening to me? What if all of this was rigged from the start? That's ridiculous. There'd be no point in all this if it was just some kind of cosmic busy work. I think that's exactly what it is. The powers that be seeing how many ways they can screw with us. Could be it's all some kind of sick joke to them. But wouldn't that get... I don't know. Boring? Okay, so you've already been here. Twice, even. Great. Then let me poke a few holes in your depressing little theory. Nobody here is screwing with you, and I can't imagine any scenario where you would have started over after slaying the princess. Uh -huh. Well, we didn't have to start over. We killed ourselves. And why, pray tell, did you do that? Because you decided to foist an infinite tedium on us. That doesn't sound like me. If I'd had everything my way, you would have effortlessly slain the princess, saved the world, and been given your happy ending. I mean... That's what the you... ending was the tedium. You locked us in a cabin and sent that cabin to an endless void, and then you told us we were happy. Well, were you happy? Of course we weren't happy. That's why we killed ourselves. It was awful. It was boring. It was bullshit. So you killed yourself? Yes, and then she killed us. Even though she was already dead. This is all fake. This is all fake. Okay, let's try to get back on track. You're real. The princess is real. The world is real. The people in the world are real. Mm -hmm. And the danger she poses to all of them is also, quite unfortunately, real. So how comes we haven't met any other people than the princess? Whatever you did the first time, it sounds like it almost worked. So how about you give it one last try? Because killing yourself seems to undo all the good you almost managed to accomplish. All this standing around and talking is boring. Let's at least do something. Maybe we'll kill her again. Maybe we won't. Maybe we'll even free her. No, we're not gonna free her here. And why should we help you? All you're going to do is lock us, lock us away forever again. Tell you what, I won't do that. I promise. 
Well, yeah, sure. That changes everything. I mean, he did promise. And you believed him? Are you the same narrator we met on the other loops? You were quick to accept that we've been here before. If I had to make a wager, I'd say yes and no. That's a hedge, not a wager. I haven't met you, but you've clearly met me. It sounds to me like you're hopping between parallel realities, in which case the me you just met here is the same collection of experiences as the me you met at all of those other beginnings, but their continuity breaks the moment you say or do anything, in effect making them all separate. So yes, I'm the same me, but ever since the moment we started talking, I'm different. I'm not sure how we're supposed to kill him ourselves, but he's asking for it. Maybe there's some way she can take care of him for us. They've clearly all been through some harrowing experiences. Don't let their baggage influence your decisions. You have the ability to see things clearly. I suggest you use it. We've killed her and been killed by her. And neither of those things have gone well for us. If we're going to fall through this loop forever, eventually we're going to let her out. We might as well do it now. You're making a dizzying amount of assumptions. Your perceived reality looping twice before does not mean it will continue to do so forever. Those little voices have already drawn attention to the fact that even the path is different. The world itself is at a tipping point. Know that there is always a choice. Even if you were stuck in an infinite loop, there's no reason to assume that the mere nature of the infinite would force you to make any specific choice. You do have free will as much as things will be easier if you didn't. And you can just keep making the correct choice forever, never deviating. I mean, we just keep slaying here, so... They're convenient. Everything always comes back to what you want us to do. I'm sick of him. Makes me want to end the world out of spite. <laughs> On second thought, let's not kill him. Let's throw him someplace that never ends. I'd like to see what that does to him. What happens if we don't go to the cabin? That's another option. Then she finds a way out on her own. Ugh, of course she does. So, standing around out here is the same as us letting her out. Only we don't have to see her. That's gotta be better, right? No, it's strictly worse. But she can't kill us out here. Why would staying out of killing distance be worse if she's getting out regardless? Because it's cowardly, for starters. And because the unknown is always worse than the known. But really, all you're doing right now is weighing two considerably bad options. The only solution worth considering is slaying her. And whatever delusion is holding you back from doing that is just that. A delusion. If you already managed to end her in some other world, the only reason you'd be here is that you somehow managed to do it wrong. Dude, we have the knife. We, we stabbed her and that's about it. How, how can this be wrong? we supposed to decide on anything if you just keep coming up with new rules since when is there a wrong way to slay her yeah right proceed to the cabin continue down the path towards the cabin i like this how you silent about your that. steps away from your destination i don't think you need any words of warning i think you know what's in there and despite your protestations I think you know what you need to do. Yeah, we're, we're gonna stab. The more he talks, the more I'm interested in setting her free. Whatever. You don't want to listen to me? Do it then. Let her out. See what I care. It sounds like somebody's about to crack. Interesting. Hold on. I'm gonna save here again. Just for the future. Are you trying to reverse psychology on me or have you just given up? There's obviously no point in trying to reason with you right now, especially with all these clowns offering up their useless advice. Honestly, it seems like the more I try and talk sense into you, the more single-minded they get about letting her out. So yes, I'm done trying to argue. Would you look at that? We won. Take it however you will. The interior of the cabin oh, is long and dark, a single narrow hallway stretching far into the distance. Curtains billow out from tall windows on either side, obscuring the path forward, fluttering helplessly as opposing gusts of wind rush into the building, clashing and joining and driving everything forward. The only furniture of note is... Hmm. That's strange. What's strange? Is it the mirror? The mirror? No, there isn't a mirror. What's strange is that there isn't much of anything in here at all, aside from the curtains. 
is supposed to be a pristine blade. Why isn't there a pristine blade? Dun dun dun. Great. Something else has been taken away from us. I suppose the only way to go is forward. So forward we will go. Blade or not, it doesn't really matter, does it? Approach the moon. You slowly make your way towards the gaping moor that awaits you. Your fraying nerves buzz with trepidation, the chill wind raising your hackles as it gently pushes you forward towards the darkness at the end of the hallway. You can't shake the feeling that you're being watched. Ooh. We've always been watched. You're watching us right now. Sometimes the feeling is just stronger than others. I feel like you're trying to put us on edge. We don't need all this anticipation. We just need this to be over. You stop as you reach the end of the hallway, I presume in front of whatever mirror isn't actually there. What are the odds she's waiting for us right now? Just out of sight, on the other side of that glass. You reach your arm forward into the pitch black of the opening. Nothing. <laughs> it's like this place read our mind just to mess with us. What you're looking at, killer? Staring into the void? Thinking about what it'd be like to die again? I know exactly how you feel. I doubt that. Shit. Where is she? You feel something long and frigid coil around your ankle. Your heart skips a beat, standing in muted shock for one long, frozen moment. And then it, she, the princess, constricts. Excuse me? Your bones snap. Ouch. Icy pain radiates up from the break, a deep cold flooding your veins as your legs, numb with the shock of it, collapse, and you collapse with them. You're met with the terrifying visage of the oh, hey. princess. Her hand grips your leg in a steel vice, her grin carved jagged from ear to ear, crowded with far too many long and crooked teeth. But do you know how I feel? I gave you a path to forgiveness. I gave you a chance to make things right. I thought maybe you'd seen what you've done and feel remorseful. Maybe try to make it up to me. But no. You'd rather use that knife to keep making the same mistake over and over and over. Yeah, that's me. Even after I ripped your heart out, you still cut me. And for what? I didn't go anywhere. You didn't banish me. I'm right back here with you. A little better, a little worse. Well, maybe a lot worse. So, here's how this is going to go. I'm going to take your body. And I'm going to walk it out of here. Okay. And you, oh. you get to watch me do it. Completely helpless. Just like you left me. Oh boy. I say we let her do it. It's something different. I mean, it is different. Do we even have a choice? You always have a choice. Maybe before, but not now. There isn't a blade this time. Exactly. What choice is there if there isn't a blade? Well, unless you have any specific ideas. I think my bow's the only one that counts. Oh boy. I thought you couldn't possess me on your own. I thought I needed to agree to it. Now is then. This is now. Look, we're even now. I killed you and then you killed me. Water under the bridge, right? And you think that's even? How adorable. But I think you forgot about the part where you tried killing me again. If I were you... I would just want to get it over with. You lost your chance to call the shots. There's no going back to fix it now. I mean... You can either look on in horror or celebrate my freedom. But either way, you're about to become a passenger. Enough talking. We'll have plenty of time for chit-chat once this place is far behind us. You remain pinned to the floor of the long hallway as the rest of the princess's body emerges. Her proportions all wrong, limbs bent and curling, moving in ways that defy your understanding. Her torso stretches until her face is practically touching yours, her neck cracking audibly as she twists to look at you from a fresh angle. Are you sure you can't do anything to help us? Can't you, like, manifest a rock right on top of her head? And crush you along with her? Not that I even can manifest a rock. Besides... I thought you all wanted to free the princess. Not like this. You don't even have a weapon. 
so I'm afraid you're out of luck, which unfortunately means that I and the rest of the world are out of luck too. Well, what a shame. And whose fault is it there isn't a weapon here? Yours, I assume. There's supposed to be a pristine blade. Whatever you did in those previous lives of yours, you really messed up. Are you seriously trying to blame this on us? Your vision fades as she tears open the membrane of your soul. Oh, boy. You're awake. Eyes once again fixed on the long hallway, your vision swimming as the princess's command reverberates inside your skull. Her voice is all-encompassing. You feel wrong. Okay, so she possessed us now. I said no. So cramped in here. Like there's some sort of growth trying to push us all out. Ouch. I know. You rise to your feet, though the pain in your ankle is blinding. Your body slumps against the wall, desperately leaning into it for support. There's another option, you know. Don't help either of them. Flip the table. That gap where the mirror was, I don't think it goes anywhere. Let's throw ourselves into the abyss. Your body, Ouch. still slumped against the wall, trapped between the princess's overwhelming will and the blinding pain of your splintered ankle, takes an excruciating step towards the cabin door. The movement is stiff, your body reduced to a marionette, pulled reluctantly along by your strings. It's not that bad. The pain feels good. Really no feel. mm, we're gonna throw ourselves into the abyss. In a single moment of overwhelming willpower, you tear your body from the wall and hurl it towards the gaping abyss. I won't let you do that. Capillaries burst and muscle fibers tear as you and the princess struggle over the reins of your body. One foot planted firmly on the edge where the floor ends, and the nothing begins. It's unquestionable that her reserves are greater than yours, but fortunately for you, the distance you have to cover is far shorter. We got this. Enough is enough. I'm tired of us always losing. It's just a step away. Ouch. You throw everything you have against her and manage for one brief moment to overpower the princess's hold on your body. But that moment was all you needed. Your foot slips a few inches and you collapse forward, the darkness swallowing you whole. I couldn't achieve an Exorcist 3. Her thought slips through you, unheeded, as you fall, and fall, and fall. <laughs> what an end. But at least it's as an empire of frigid nothing. I don't think this qualifies as saving. World, but at least you didn't ruin it. What happens now? But I want to know what he thinks happens now. Oh, and why is that? Okay. Nah. He's gone. But wait. Terminal velocity ceases, and you feel a something, a something, a mass, a growth, torn out of you. You and the princess look at each other for a short moment. What? What is happening in me? Hey, another one for the collection. But you don't answer her before she's gone, and you feel a resistance underneath your feet once more. Memory returns. She's gone? W where did she go? Should we try and find her? And there's that mirror again. Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. 
You approach the mirror. Silence as you reach forward. They are gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You've grown. You find yourself in the long quiet once again. You are at the cabin. Approach her. Flickering lights in empty cityscapes. Is a child. Okay, skipping through. Eyes. Give me one second. With every gift you bring Just... me, I excavate the alleys of what I am meant to be. And every exploration yields new and complicated truths. What I will be is different than what I am. What I am is different from what I was. But in this moment, all I want is to, is to know... But in this moment, all I want to know is myself. You know, that at the end of this, once you finish, I'm going to kill you, right? There is still much to be seen. Neither of us know the depths of our being. Perhaps at the end of this, I will be the one to kill you. Or perhaps we will leave this place together and find new horizons to discover. Those Skipping through. Well, gifts aren't what someone tells you to bring them. Mm. This one is loneliness turned to seething. She could not find her strength in others, so she found it in herself. She will make for a driven heart. Do not mourn her. She isn't alone anymore. My preference. There is a hurt that dwells in them, but they are not me. They are thoughts and perspectives. They are feelings that inform my being. The wounds they've suffered carve texture around my heart. Without them, I would be as I was before. I cannot be as I was before. There are new spaces that I must fill. If I am to be an ocean, you have given me enough to build a pond. My waters are shallow and murky, and I yearn for more perspective. I will transcend in due time, and there is no way forward but to contribute to my awakening. I'm ready to go back. I await your return, but it will give me time to reflect on what I am. We will meet again. Everything goes dark. And you die. Achievement unlocked. A seething vessel. Bring the wraith to her. You're on a path. Okay. So we are currently back in chapter one. So we have to make one more playthrough, I think, of this whole thing, of this whole shtick. So um, I'm gonna end this here. Um, we're gonna continue on next time. This is like, you know, it was like one and a half hour ish. For this one playthrough so i'm assuming there will be another one just as much time needed so i'm kind of out of time so yeah this is my first recording session of slay the princess thank you all for hanging we're gonna save here again so we have that here and yeah that being said i'll see you all on the next part of slay the princess the recording and not the live stream i guess i hope you enjoyed it as much as i did i love this game so much i know i'm not talking that much but it's just everything is narrated i'm trying to be immersed and you know it's just a wonderful game so i'll see you all next time take care